Uh, but okay, uh, for example, one interesting line which has come up quite a lot in the last few years and well, has been known for quite a while, but I think has taken a while to really become common knowledge among uh, more players and maybe still isn't really common knowledge, is the line where uh, Black delays G6. And I was talking about way earlier in the video how like this is a kind of more accurate move order to, you know, play g6 instead of taking on a6. Uh, however, the line I'm going to show you isn't really related to that point. It, instead, the idea is we're not even going to take on a6. We're going to play what is instead known as the Perinovic line, named after, I believe it's like some Serbian grandmaster who played this line a lot, where uh, after bishop g7, the idea is to go e4 and not even play d6, just to play castles and invite white to try and just basically run us over with e5, knight e8, and basically the point is they try and protect the center, we're just going to counter attack and have a lot of counterplay. And to be honest, I would probably consider this line to be a little bit objectively better than the taking immediate one. It won't matter so much if you're like anywhere under 2000, especially 2000 online, I believe. You know, people just, even if they know, for example, the a4 line that we talked about uh, earlier in this position where, you know, uh, say here they go, and I know I recommend to go queen b6, but even if they do know this and they get this on the board, it's not going to be the end of the world. I think you can play, say, for example, rook a6, queen a8. This is a tricky line where you try to go e6 and get counterplay in the d5 one. I just find it difficult because even though, you know, this is called a refutation, it's like if there are two grandmasters playing each other, you know, they're probably going to play it very well and Black is going to have a tough time, but between two sub-2000 players, I, I have a difficult time imagining it's going to pan out exactly like that. But again, from like a more purely objective, truth, whatever you want to call it, standpoint, I do believe that probably the Perinovich variation is a little bit better. Still, there are some ways that it can really, as White, put a lot of pressure on it, as I'm going to show right now. But some of the main points are, is that, say, for example, after Knight of Free, is a black and blue queen a5. And this is a very trappy variation. A lot of people go wrong with right in this position, actually. For example, in 2014, Magnus Carlsen played this against Boris Gelfand in a rapid game. And Gelfand is a very strong player, of course, at his peak. Uh, was a world championship challenger, 2700 rated. And even he in this position just basically fucked up very badly. He played bishop d3. And if you want to try and pause the video and figure out why this is bad, I suggest you try and figure that out. But the idea is that black can play knight takes d5 with the point that e takes d5, bishop takes e3 check, takes, and uh, now this is a fork, and the only way to protect it is to go bishop d2, but then you lose uh, this bishop, and of course black is not only equal in material, but is going to have a bunch of free pawns pick up in the near future, which is why probably a better move for white to play instead of bishop d3 is to uh, neutralize this pin, but still these positions I think after bishop takes a6, uh, say for example takes takes, queen e2, uh, e6 is known to be quite good for black. You could also go d6 of course, and, and this is completely fine, but e6 is another interesting option available in these lines because we did not commit to it earlier on. However, some of the more critical tries against the Perinovich variation, let's say, one is this move to go a7 and basically the idea is that now after rook takes a7 knight f3 the black probably is going to have to go for something more like d6 e6 they can't really put a queen on a5 anymore because the rook is on a7 uh, if that doesn't make sense i'll show you right now so bishop d2 imagine uh, let's say you want to play any random move like d6 well now knight b5 uh, and not only is the queen attacked but also the rook is attacked uh you know in the other variation let's say this one for example right uh, you know, black could play bishop takes a6, uh, but there was no knight b5 stuff like there is, uh, again, coming back to this variation because the rook was an a8 there. Uh, here, that's just not the case, and uh, again, white's going to win the exchange now. Not very fun, which is why, typically in these positions, again, black plays something like e6, and after bishop e2 takes, takes, d6, castles, you know. You know, white is a little bit better by objective standards, but I think for the practical player, especially like sub-2200 or whatever, like this is perfectly playable, you're going to have a pretty, you know, fighting game. But the thing which scares me a lot more than this variation, which, you know, just sort of ensues in more of a, you know, long struggle, we could call it, are the positions where white plays e5, and uh, I talked about earlier how something like f4 is probably not so concerning, neither is knight f3, uh, but rather what is actually very scary is why just playing h4, an idea we've talked about a couple times throughout this video. But in this case, the, the move h4 basically implies the sacrifice of the e5 pawn, and the main line continues like bishop e5, bishop h6 or something, knight g7, h5. And to be honest, I think this position is playable for black, but it's extremely double-edged, very dangerous for not only black actually, but I think sometimes it can be dangerous for white. And also, in case you're curious, uh, you do sort of have to take the pawn on e5. I've played this a bit with white, and I've had people say, for example, play h5 against me, which is not good because white just plays g4 and really just slams through on the king's side and absolutely demolishes everything. 
Uh, if you try to go to d6 as well, for example, that also doesn't work very well because e6 takes and then h5 is very unpleasant. But okay, again, I think this position you sort of have to go for. Maybe it's like knight f3, I think, and then bishop f6, h5, something like that, right? And while you might be thinking this sort of looks a little bit scary, I think it's also important to keep things in perspective that basically no one bloody knows about e5, uh, h4, unless they have some super high level opening course or they're like me and they just somehow know of this stuff because they know so much opening theory. But yeah, again, printed variation, how do you get to this? g6, knight c3, you don't take on a6, not immediately, never pretty much. In this position, you try to go queen a5, but there's some slightly, you know, annoying lines like a7, e5, and you, you want to make sure that you do your research before you really get into these uh, lines yourself. But finishing up the video, I want to talk about this idea e6 in this position where, you know, black doesn't go for the more conventional takes or the Perinovich line, the fully accepted variation. They instead just go for something completely different, e6, which, again, we've seen this idea a few times throughout this video. I think it's very much inspired by the modern engines where they basically have zero respect for, like, chess culture or whatever you want to call it, playing the more, like, conventional ways that we've established for whatever openings. Instead, they just pick whatever they concretely like. And it just so happens that this exact setup seems to work well against various of White's, you know, tries that they can play against Benko. And just to show one small excerpt from a game, knight c3 is pretty much what is always played. Uh, takes, takes, bishop e7. Usually people play knight takes e7, takes. Uh, e3 is a very common move, castles knight f3. And you know, this actually doesn't seem like too crazy a position. Maybe you think d5 is going to happen next. Bishop a6 sort of reminds you a bit of a Blumenfeld or some other stuff we've seen throughout this video. But what black actually played in this game, and is actually quite thematic for this exact variation, is play rook takes a6. And the whole idea is that uh, after bishop takes a6, uh, bishop takes a6, well, now white can't really castle, which is why we uh, typically see, like, let's say, uh, bishop e2, let's say knight e4, so this is a very common idea, castles, and uh, black is a very thematic move of going rook h6, or maybe even rook g6, and after something like, let's say, knight c6, d6, trying to bring a bishop into the game, maybe the queen eventually somehow, Black is going to have very dangerous counterplay, and this isn't really something I'd personally want to play with the white pieces. In this game, white was feeling very brave, and they actually decided to play bishop takes a6, which I'm not sure the engines actually appreciate that much, but this is what white tried in the game, and it was very risky, to, to say the least, after takes. Uh, white has a lot of troubles castling kingside. I think the engine's top move was to actually play knight g1, knight e2, and then castle, which I think is saying something. So, uh, in the game, white tried to play queen a4, and develop on the queen side like this, but this was incredibly risky. And after long castles, knight takes f2, you know, we were winning back material at the very least, and I, I think it was safe to say that the opening was a pretty resounding success for black. They went on to lose the game, but that definitely was not a result of what happened thus far. 